Hello, friends. I am coming to you because I listened to a really interesting Radio Lab episode called uh, In the Dust of This Planet. I will have a link to it below. But basically, they did a deep dive into nihilism and the reception of nihilism and the idea that there is kind of a moment for nihilism right now. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the word nihilism, I'm not an expert, but in a nutshell, it's the idea that nothing matters. We're all going to die. <laughs> I think in this moment of like climate change and war in Ukraine and, you know, two years in going of, of a pandemic, I think nihilism gets kind of appealing sometimes. Um, and part of what they explored in this Radio Lab episode was that nihilism is cool, that there's something like cool about saying, I don't care, we're all going to die, nothing even matters. And it got me thinking about the difference between nihilism and Buddhist teachings like emptiness that also say, hey, we are all going to die. <laughs> and at the end of the day, everything you've worked for, everyone you've loved, everyone you've hated, all of that is also going to dissolve or vanish or somehow die. <laughs> so what exactly is the difference between the Buddhist perspective that conventional reality, reality the way we understand it, is not real, <laughs> not ultimately real, because it's all changing, it's all evolving all the time, and there's nothing you can really just put your stake in and say, hey, this is real, it's not going to change out from under me. And by the way, if you're interested in the topic of impermanence, I am planning a, a course on this topic on May 12th and 19th. We'll have live sessions, but there's also going to be recorded teachings and meditations. So if you want more information, you can check out the notes. But basically getting back to nihilism and why Buddhism is not nihilism, I would say the reason that this emphasis on impermanence, this emphasis on change, even reflecting on our own inevitable death, the reason that's not nihilistic from a Buddhist perspective is that, first of all, there's Buddha nature. And again, if you're not familiar with this idea of Buddha nature, it's the idea that like there is a luminous reality to each of us, our true nature. So like, yes, all conventional things are going to die. They are going to end. We're all going to die. This planet someday, billions of years, probably in the future is going to get blown up when the sun blows up too. So like, <laughs> what is there in this universe that we can trust? And the Buddhist answer is actually the true nature of reality. So when Buddhism talks about emptiness, when we talk about impermanence, lack of inherently existent self, the fact that conventional reality is just never going to be fully satisfying in the way that we think it's going to be, the reason that's not nihilism is that Buddhism is leading somewhere. And maybe some nihilistic philosophers and thinkers are too. I don't know. That's not really my field. But Buddhism doesn't stop at negating ordinary or conventional reality. Buddhism then says you have to cut through all this stuff, not like to reach some empty, dark, you know, boring, unchanging state of just having like eliminated everything. You're actually cutting through the things that we think are real. This body as me, this mind as me, even past and future lives, like trying to locate some inherently existent me in there, it's just never going to work from a Buddhist perspective. But <laughs> when you try to find a, a self in what you think is your real self, that conventional sense of self, mind, body, history, social security number, whatever, and you don't find anything... The Buddhist answer is not that you just then stop and you're like, well, nothing exists. We obviously exist. Once you've cut through all that other stuff, that's when you actually can arrive at Buddha nature. You arrive at something that's beyond the ordinary. And I think this is really where Buddhism diverges from modern forms of Western philosophy that land in a place that sounds a lot like nihilism. Um... The basic teaching of Buddhism is that we can transform ourselves, our way of knowing that there is something beyond the conventional level of reality. 
And by beyond it, I don't mean separate from it. It's like conventional reality is one side of a coin and ultimate reality is the other side of the coin, except there's no sides and there's no coin. <laughs> But like they're integrated, they're totally integrated. And if we could see conventional reality with complete clarity, if we weren't like constantly applying this layer of things are going to stay the same, I'm going to be the same, I need to find what's going to make me happy and do that or buy that or like have that person in my life. If we could peel off all those overlays that we put on top of what's actually there, we could experience conventional reality, you know, the room around us, the breath we breathe, every sound we hear, we could actually experience the ultimate in what we think of as conventional. So this is just a little short episode to pop in and share a thought that I've been having about the ultimate nature of reality because I'm a nerd and I think about that a lot. Um, so I just want to, I just want to underscore that yes, in Buddhism, there's a lot of talk about impermanence, emptiness, lack of inherent existence, just cutting through our assumptions about the everyday world. But you get somewhere. You don't just cut things apart and then there's nothing. You cut and cut and cut. And once you've completely disassembled everything you thought you were, you discover what's always been there underneath that everything you thought you were. That's part of the reason that Tibetan descriptions of the death process are actually, to me, really inspiring because they say, look, you're going to cut through all this stuff and that's okay because it was never real in the first place. You know, the death process strips all of this away from us, body, mind, perceptions, even our, our cognitive ability, the ability to think. And if that was just the end of it, we would land in a nihilistic place. But instead, Buddhism is the middle way, madhyamaka, between nihilism and eternalism. And it balances out that tendency toward nihilism by saying, yes, but there is something that is real and we can get there, just not with our ordinary mind. <laughs> All we have to do is leave behind everything we think we know, which is actually not as easy as it might sound. So for anyone who might have been going to a nihilistic place, a, a dark place, and, you know, maybe feeling encouraged in that tendency by Buddhist teachings, I just want to say, yes, that is important and, you know, necessary part of the process of investigating reality, but it's not where we land. There is Buddha nature. We don't end when we die. The universe is not devoid of of wisdom and light and compassion. So I hope you're well, and I hope if you are going to a place of nihilism, you can feel that Buddha nature underneath. <laughs>